before, I think I would kind of push myself and push myself and push myself. And if it didn't feel right, it just get more frustrating. So I think I've learned to be like, okay, it's fine to kind of put this one on hold, maybe draw something else, maybe go for a walk, go for a drink. Like I've learned to take it easier on myself, not put so much pressure to kind of make it happen like that. Welcome to Works in Process, a series of conversations where I talk to creative individuals about their latest projects. I'm George Garristegui. That's this episode's guest, Justin Teodoro. He's an artist and illustrator who once was a fashion designer and now just focuses on his illustration skills, chronicling pop culture via his graphic doodles. I catch up with him at his apartment to find out how he uses his networking skills to amass those clients that he's had, how he's building relationships for the future, and what he just does for fun. So let's get to our conversation. Hey, Justin. Hello. Thanks so much for meeting me and being on our Works and Process, Thank you. process podcast. <laughs> Thank I'm going to leave that in. <laughs> um, I kind of have this ritual when I'm starting my podcast, and I do something... To kind of get us a little acclimated, I call these things icebreakers, right? So they're just going to be a series of this or that questions. Okay. And then kind of word association, what's the first thing you hear when you hear this term? Okay. All right? Okay. Go for (laughs) it. So toast or a bagel? Uh, Bagel. Rock or hip hop? Uh, Rock. Chicago pizza or New York pizza? New York pizza? That a question? No statement. (laughs) (laughs) New York pizza? Um, I had to think about it. The New York pizza. (laughs) New York pizza. Beatles or Rolling Stones? Uh, Rolling Stones. Dogs or cats? Uh, Dogs. Books or movies? Books. I was going to almost say you have to say this. I have to say books. We're in his apartment (laughs) and all I see is books around us. Piles and piles. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Beer or wine? Uh, Wine. Okay. Cool. And so now we're just going to do word association. Um, Creativity. Um, Inspiration. Design. Um, Process. Art. Um, Freedom. Business. Uh, Savvy. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Failure. Um, Experience. Clients. Um, People. Mistakes. Mm, Learning. Tools. Um, Essential. Skills. Um, Required. Opportunity. They're out there. It's more than one word, but... (laughs) It's okay. (laughs) Future. Um, Let's see. Risk. Um, Necessary. And last, process. Um, Takes time. Perfect. See? Yeah. It's not bad. Quick, fast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't have time to think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I've known you for a while. Mm-hmm. We've probably known each other, I don't know, probably six years, something like that. About and I know that, yeah. you from my wife's friend. Mm-hmm. I've kind of followed you on some social channels. We're friends on Facebook and mm-hmm. some other things. Um, we've met up. But there are probably a lot of people who have seen your work but don't really know you mm-hmm. or haven't even really seen your work, but they're going to learn about you hopefully from this podcast yeah. and I want to do this thing where I call it your origin story. Okay. So I want you to take me on a little trip that just describes what you've done to bring us into this room gotcha. with all these <laughs> illustrations that are <laughs> yeah, hanging yeah. in your house. Um, so I, you know, I, I was always that artsy kid growing up drawing. Um, I always say I started off drawing s- superheroes to supermodels. Um, yeah, and I think I've always wanted to go, I always wanted to come to New York and do something in design. It took me a while to figure what, what that was. Um, so after I graduated from Toronto for my just a general arts degree and kind of took some time off just figuring things out, I came to New York about, my gosh, 12 years ago to go to Parsons to kind of pursue this, a career in fashion. Fashion was something I've always want, always wanted to do. Um, you know, like I said, I, learned drawing supermodels, going through all my mom's magazines, was absorbed in fashion, I think, but I never knew how to get into um, that world because it seemed something so different and specific than what I was probably used to, even even though I was kind of always an artsy kid. So yeah, and I 
came into New York to do this program with Andrea. That's how we met at Parsons. And yeah, I just started working from there and luckily, you know, got my first internship off, you know, from school and then got my first job and that kind of snowballed into, you know, just a eight year career as a women's wear designer, um, which was great. Um, you know, I got to, ex- you know, do the things I imagine a fashion designer ha- w- would do, you know, from the shows to, you know, working with pattern makers, um, just getting to meet all different sorts of people and travel. Um, but I think it was in the last two years when I was, when I was working um, that I kind of had a shift in what I, how I looked at my work. And that's when I realized maybe being a designer wasn't exactly what I was destined to do. I had to be kind of honest about that. Um, and, then, and then it kind of coincided with me kind of drawing, drawing for myself again. Cause you know, I was drawing for work, but it was kind of, it became a work thing as opposed to like a me thing. So I think just those two things that kind of happened, I kind of just started enjoying drawing for myself and kind of found like a, I guess started to see like a, a, a voice I had. Um, Cause I always hear like, if you want to, you know, make your mark in the industry, whatever it is, you have to, you have to have a point of view. And I, I don't think I had a strong point of view as a designer, but as an illustrator, I kind of found, I felt, I felt, I found some sort of like comfort zone. I found something that I, I could say. And then, yeah, I think it just, I just started taking on projects that were kind of with friends or friends of friends, like kind of doing posters or for small events. And, you know, that pretty much just gave me the, little bit of confidence to kind of say like, okay, let's kind of, if I'm not happy with doing the design work and I, you know, I can't change the industry, but why not just kind of like make this little detour and see how this um, goes. And yeah, I made the leap three and a half years ago, just from a pretty good cushy design job to kind of, you know, diving into something a bit unknown, a bit scary, but um, yeah, it, it just, it felt right. So that's how we got to where this, how I am here. Right. And here is in his apartment. Yeah. With, yeah. with all these illustrations, yeah. these beautiful doodles on canvas, on pencil, marker, paintings. They're framed, they're unframed, they're on cardboard. There's stacks of books, <laughs> stacks and stacks and stacks <laughs> of books. And papers. And, and paper. And, yeah. Right. Um, but it feels good. It feels like I'm in an artist's house. Yeah. In an apartment. Right, so I, I I definitely get the vibe. Mm-hmm. This is something you need to kind of be around. Yeah. Now you mentioned something that you kind of felt this shift two years almost before you left your job. What kind of shift was that? Um, I you know honestly I think the role of a designer in New York and just a working designer in general. I think it's you're just um, you know cog in the machine type of thing. So you're kind of um, it's. I, you know, it's not what I imagine it to be like, you know, I don't think that's the reality of being like a Saint Laurent or Karl Lagerfeld who sketches and has this creative freedom. There's so much that goes into it, which I understand definitely now because it's a business. So I think um, it just started, it didn't seem as fun to me anymore. That's pretty much how it came about. Like it became, a, it, I saw it as, as a business and one had to be. And I think I, when I started to see it as my work as work, because I, I, for me, I always approach this type, what I do, there has to be some sort of element of like, I enjoy it. Right. When I started not to enjoy it, that's when I had, that's when the shift in my thinking came that I have to kind of, um, you know, figure out what it is that I can do that make it enjoyable for me. Right. So you said that probably started, you started to draw from yourself. Yeah. For, started to draw for yourself. Yes. So when you were drawing stuff for the fashion companies you were with, mm-hmm. was it mainly because you're designing the works or you're just drawing the patterns or your, or your ideas or you're actually drawing kind of similar to what you're drawing now? No, it's very different. I mean, it's like um, you're just drawing flats of clothes and you have to draw, you know, create things super fast. A lot of things right now, you know, the reality is you copy things. So you just regurgitate things that are out there and you're just like looking on, you know, uh, Zara or whatever website just to kind of find a new idea because there's always changes in meaning. So what I, I mean, I was drawing, but it was very different than what I, how I would draw for myself. And that's mm-hmm. the thing I just, I kind of started doing again just to kind of find some sense of enjoyment in fashion again, because I never disliked or hated fashion. I just didn't enjoy the work as a designer. So now you start drawing for yourself. Yeah. 
and to fill that void of the enjoyment of of what you do. Mm-hmm. So you just started picking up side clients, side, your friends, or, yeah, or kind it just of doing ha- just random things. It just happened. You know, I think I was I started drawing for myself and putting. I, I started the blog, putting things up there on the blog, and then um, Facebook. This was all before like Instagram. Um, and then I, one of my first few projects, I was introduced to uh, Lorenzo Martone, Martone Cycling. So, you know, he, a friend of a friend introduced me um, and I started doing some illustrations for their social media and, um, you know, posters for like um, showroom type of things. Um, so it was small stuff I was doing, but stuff that kind of gave me some encouragement. Um, and then, you know, once I started once I left my job and just had to kind of go out there, it's just, you know, you really have to kind of get out of your own shell and just be your own best cheerleader advocate, you know? Um, And then I think, and when you think about it, you know, we have, we have so many connections with people that once I just started, you know, saying my story, what I, what I do, like someone, a friend who introduced me to the editor of this place or that place. And, you know, I think for the first few months, I was just sending my work out, um, getting, you know, nice feedback. Um, and then, you know, just and and still drawing for myself and just, you know, putting my work out there. I think that's when I left my work 2013. That's when I started getting more active on Instagram. So, I mean, that act that acted as a huge like, like marketing tool for me just to kind of also promote my work. But um yeah, I think I started doing stuff with Martone Cycling, and I still do. I still do work with them. Um, oh, nice! And then, yeah, I mean, Barney's New York kind of came about because a good friend of mine introduced me to the editor of Barney's The Window. I need then... friends like you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's funny. It's like when you kind of just you know mention things or kind of put yourself out there and just talk about stuff. You just never know how. For me, my experience, you never know how things can go, and that's the thing I kind of realized too. It's like. Um, you know, going to like a dinner party or something, something you never would expect. You never know who you could meet. Right. I mean, you know, things might not happen right away, but, you know, a couple of months down the door, you know, so I think that definitely just kind of, um, and I had to kind of think about that too. And I had to kind of think, who do I know? Who knows if I want to approach Barney's or I want to approach Vogue? Who do I know that knows someone there to kind of reach so out to? So is that to? a thought process in your head or is it a, a cognizant idea like, okay, I need to get into Barney's. So I need to know who I know that knows that, or it's just kind of you know. I mean, I guess I it's hard. I guess there probably are moments that I probably got more specific and try to trying to strategize. But generally, it's just um, Barney's a friend, a good friend of mine. She knew the editor there, so she just gave me your email, and I, I was introduced to her. Um, and then a few months later, I got a call about, oh, would you be, would you want to do an illustration for the website? So. Um, yeah, it, it's a mix. Like, obviously, there are times you want to try to be strategic. You want to try to kind of think, how can you, who do you know that knows who? Um, I'm great at giving that advice to other friends, just to be like, oh, I know this person. Why don't you contact them? But, right. but I guess for me, a lot of it is just, um, you know, it, 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 it has been all natural, which I think I prefer. It has been. Yeah, it has been. It's been just a natural, like, natural introductions. Um, and then you know, once you start working with people, hopefully, and luckily, those relationships do grow. Right. I mean, you mentioned also, right, you got the email for the editor of Barney's. Yeah. And it took a couple of months for you to get a response. Or did it, was it was it quickly? Um, I met her and she was, some, she was at someplace else. And then she reached out to me maybe a few months later, I think in the same 2014, uh, maybe the summer. And then about doing an illustration project. So, and what kind of illustration project was that? It was basically. Um, so when I started just drawing for myself, I created this little series called "How I Dress If I Were a Girl," and I still kind of, I still kind of illustrate that series. It's that was always my approach when I was designing as a women's wear designer, as a man designing for a woman. Would I wear this if I were a girl? So I kind of used that as like a little. Um, hashtag tool title so yeah the first project was really great she just was really cool very nice and just said you know would you want to do illustration you know um with your how i dress fire girl but just choose a designer that barney sells and i chose dries van noten one of my favorite designers i just kind of created had kind of carte blanche to create uh you know just illustration of what was in stores that season that's interesting 
being allowed to have that carte blanche to kind yeah. of to to almost um have a style that somebody wants to do and they say we'll pick somebody that yeah. we sell right not yeah. telling you to do this yes yeah and and then allowing you to just pick something and it gets to do something that you actually really enjoy yeah um that's really odd that meaning <laughs> well be you know that's not everybody's usually kind of told what yeah to do. yeah yeah no i mean now that i kind of think back on it it was a very um um it was a good experience. It wasn't anything, you know, obviously I've had mixed experiences since then, you know, n- n- nothing is ever perfect, but for something like as a first project with Barney's to work with an editor who I've become friendly with, and then also just to kind of have an open carte blanche to create an illustration that was kind of cool. So, right. So you also mentioned, I think in the beginning when you were starting to transition from fashion design into this new illustration that mm-hmm. you're doing, that you had to find your voice, you had to find your yeah. style. Yeah. What would you call your style? Um, my illustration style? Yeah, I mean, you know, we're on a podcast, right? So nobody can see yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, I think I like to make, obviously draw fashion in a fashion illustration style, but I do mix a lot of like pop culture references. Um, I just, you know, like to make commentaries on whatever it is that I see if it's fashion, music what's going on today i like mixing text in my work a lot so i like to do um if it's a quote of someone i like to mix in words into my drawings you know a lot of it's a collage of you know just all my different interests but just me illustrating it in a way that's and my style is very kind of like colorful loose um so that's how i describe my illustrations i mean i i you know from some of the stuff i see it has this reminiscence of a looser, whoever the illustrator for like Lord and Taylor ads used to be a long time ago in New York Times where they oh, these um, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's, that was really tight and, you know, fashion illustration style, but yours has that same energy, but just oh, a lot oh, looser. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I grew, thank you. I mean, that's something I've always like, that's why I wanted to go into fashion. Just kind of do, actually it was more or less about the clothes more about just creating these illustrations and then hope and the clothes would come from that. So that, that's always in, been in my kind of um in my sensibility um for sure and i guess too i think what's also been great about just as i've kind of gone through my career just you know i realize i do have a variety of different drawing illustration styles which i've gotten to i guess maximize um you know just do different projects different work for different clients you know from illustration stuff to more graphic design stuff so I think that's also kind of like my um, my illustration voice. It's you know I think there's so many different like um, tones to it that it's been great to kind of just be able to share that. Right, you don't have one real. Yeah, style. yeah. I remember I was always nervous about having like too many different styles if it seemed too like schizophrenic or too all over the place. But I guess for me it worked to my advantage. So it's it's been a nice mix and range. So do you think that? You know, you just mentioned, obviously, Barney's that we can go a little bit mm-hmm. into. You know, we have Kevin Oqua, who is a makeup, um, fashion makeup brand, yeah. right? And then um, the murals that we'll talk about soon. But those also, each one looks slightly different. Yeah. Is it is it conscious to say that, you know, because sometimes you can say, well, I'm doing the mural and a mural has to look at this way. So my style is going to adapt to that. Or is it subject matter? How well, do you approach that? Um, well, if with like illustration projects, so if I do something for like a Barney's to whoever, um, I do look at what they, who they are and what they, you know, are asking for. It's been great to be like, I can inject my own style into it, not to kind of give them what I think they want. Because they, they probably, they want something for me. Right. Which is a nice feeling. Um, so, I, I mean, I guess I do kind of adapt it to the different clients in illustration. I guess, you know, they kind of maybe have the same thread or style, but, you know, there's, you know, different seasons or whatever, the different packaging. Um, the mural stuff, um, which I've gotten into lately, is different. I think that's another side of my work where it's kind of, I call it more graphic doodle. So it's, you know, I love Keith Haring. So there's definitely that Keith Haring Picasso influence in it um you know a lot of a lot of those that i do i you know just kind of create on site just freehand it you know i you know repeating motifs um you know and it's also interesting when you are in a different environment so that kind of that in a way kind of dictates or helps me create the artwork in itself so um yeah it, it 
you know, a lot of it just depends on, I guess, really does depend on the client and what the project is. And that kind of, you, you do have to adapt to what they want. So when we're talking about the makeup line, right, mm-hmm. you worked on designing illustrations for packaging for, for their website. Like what was the actual ask that the client wanted? So they actually first discovered me on social, social media, because I just drew a series of drawings of Kevin himself backstage. Just, I love those images of him doing makeup on all the supermodels like Cindy, Linda, Naomi, um, Kristen. So I remember I just drew a series of drawings of those, put them out on my social just because I wanted to share that. And then um, they reached out to me from seeing that and approached me about um, doing a project with them. So the first project I did, I was asked to just create artwork for a tote and like a special um, packaging, like Kevin O'Quan for Barney's New York. So that was my first project with them. And I kind of just been, it's been a nice relationship ever since then. I've sort of done stuff internally for them and, um, packaging. I, you know, I think I did a lot of packaging for them for like their hot last holiday, um, series. Um, so it's been great just to, when people like your work and you can get to still work with them. And you also, for me, it was a thrill working with Kevin O'Quan, the brand, right? Cause that's something I grew up with. And you're definitely getting to work with brands and people that you've idolized or kind of within that world that you want to be in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so you just design the illustrations for it. Somebody else does all the packaging work. I design the illustrations and then, you know, I'm given like the templates to work into for and placements. So placement and stuff. Yeah. So also you said you just randomly took stuff from Kevin O'Quant and then drew it. And then they just reached out cause they just happened to see that you were drawing him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Nothing. Did you hashtag? Did you link him? Did you tag him in a post? Oh, yeah, you, yeah. If I do stuff like that, I tag like, you know, I think I right. tag the brand. Um, okay. It was just more just me. But it was it was just you doing yeah. something for yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then they looked at it, saw that you tagged it, and kind of just reached out to you. Yeah. So that was like an organic. Yes. Yeah. Connection. Yeah. So you know, if it was, other people it could be a lot of hard work trying to get that connection. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, social media like Instagram has been a huge just way to get my work in people's faces. So I think I, you know, I definitely learned over the years just how to kind of um, just use that just to show my work and show it, show in a way that I want to show it, but also, you know, and that's how people reach, that's how I've gotten projects, people coming to me through it, just, you know, liking my work, they see it. Cause it's, it's a great thing when you can kind of, your work is seen on by everyone, you know, just, you know, all over the world, industry people, you know, because I don't think I would honestly be able to do what I'm doing if I didn't have that. Because I did before, like, send my portfolio to, you know, different agencies and, you know, you the just get... The old school way of yeah, doing it. Yeah, old school it. way, yeah. And you just get, you know, emails back and forth and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, right now it's it's more instant when you can at least connect with, you know, a brand or someone you admire. And so... And so... Following some of your Instagram stuff, I've seen you, you've done, you know, drawings of celebrities, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes those drawings go on t-shirts and stuff like yeah. that. And sometimes the celebrities actually get the stuff that you do. How cool is that? It's very cool. No, it's, I mean, I like, it's cool just to kind of, you know, see someone you admire, grew up with, recognize your work and comment or like it. And you kind of can kind of chat with them just, you know, through emails or something, you know, it's great. I mean... You know, I think for me, it's like all the stuff that I draw and put out there, like if it did eventually get me some like, you know, work project from it, it was just really, it's purely me just, I want to draw it because I enjoy drawing it and to share it. So that's how I kind of treat what I put out there. And hopefully maybe that like just, you know, enjoyment, purity of me doing it kind of catches people's attention and, you know, but um, it's been, it's cool to kind of get that, you know, if I draw someone and they recognize and they like it. Yeah, I can imagine that being yeah. really, really satisfying. Yeah. Um, one, that they even saw it. Yeah. Right? And then two, that they like it and, you, you know, there is at least somewhat of a connection and yeah. it could get a little larger if you actually connect with them and talk to them. Like yeah. You said yeah, 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 email. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's really... <laughs> I would love to do that more often. Just draw something <laughs> of yeah, somebody I mean, and then, you know, be like, oh, wow, you know, now we're having conversations. <laughs> but I think I think what your point was is is social does that. It, it brings us a lot closer to yeah. these brands or people yeah, yeah. than before they were behind a wall of, you know, 
brand managers or, oh, yeah, or, or yeah, agents yeah. or this yeah. and you couldn't and you know these people have phones and they can look at it real quick yeah. and you know they see they're tagged in it or something and yeah i mean that's kind of how the nature of it, it how it goes now and that's um that's the kind of interesting part about it i think it's definitely just for my type of work opened up a lot of doors not just for me but for other artists and illustrators who've just you know created gained their momentum just from social and putting their work out there Right. So going back to your connections, right? So you, yeah. you, you have this makeup brand and you have Barney's New York, mm -hmm. right? And then with your connection from Barney's New York, I think you went to Japan. Yes. Yeah. And you did this really huge yeah. installation in Japan. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. Um, so I was approached for, with this age, from this agency um, s summer of 2015. I remember I was, it was about May. Um, about a project for Barney's Japan and, and it was going to be for their holiday campaign. They wanted to have artwork for their campaign. So, I mean, that was huge just to get, you know, just to get that offer. So yeah, it, it was kind of over the summer that I worked that summer. I worked on it. I remember, um, uh, August was pretty much the month that I worked on it. They actually, the Barney's Japan team came to New York to meet me. They came to my apartment, which I definitely <laughs> moved <laughs> stuff around to make it look nice. But it was cool because it was very, they were just very sweet, very just excited. And um, it was cool to meet them because they were excited to meet me. And we talked about the project, the concept. And yeah, then um, I worked in it in August. And then they offered to invite, they invited me to the opening. Um, flew me to Japan for the launch party. So it was cool. I mean, it was just, you know, for the month of August, I'm just working here. That was more me creating the, creating the artwork files and then sharing it with them. And then they created, you know, it went on to um, like catalogs, bags, to, um, I think the whole concept was playing cards. So they made actual playing cards with it. So you know, they, they took my artwork and used it you know, in all different um, capacities and contexts, which is amazing to see. Right. I mean, you know, looking at some of the um, the images of it, because I was doing some research to yeah. see and noticing how large that installation was and yeah. seeing it, I think, like in stations. So take me through that. They come to your house. You're talking about concept, yeah. right? And this concept is playing cards. Why, yeah. would, why would it be playing cards? Um, Do you remember? I, I think that was just the concept they had going into it. So they wanted to create it around like a casino, like a winter wonderland. So they wanted to do like playing cards. So um, like, um, and they would be, uh, they told me, oh, like, so for um, um, two of hearts example, they would give me specific looks to illustrate. Again, looks that were available in, in, in stores. Right. Um, but again, it was open for me to interpret how to illustrate these cards and what they would look like. Um, that was kind of like the general first meeting I had with them. I think it was more just introduction because, you know, um, I'm sure they wanted to meet me and see what I was all about. Right, right. Um, and then I remember just that month of August, it was just like corresponding, just getting more briefs from them. Um, and then, you know, once I got the first kind of draft process approved, I just kind of s sketched everything from there. All um, right. So you said that August. Yeah. Locked up in here, working. Just working, working. What does that mean? What is that? What is working on a project like that at that scale? I try not to, I try not to think about how big it is. I, just, I try to think of every project as like it's on that same level. So what is that level? Just make it look good. If I will get very specific and I'll kind of, if I draw an eye and I don't like the eye, I'll draw it 10 times, like get it right. Um, but you know, it's, yeah, you have to kind of like get in your own little... You know, I lock myself in, you know, just two, three weeks, just drawing straight, just to kind of plow through it. Um, that's the only way I can really do it, I think. I think the conceptual idea of, oh, this is for a friend, right? Or this is a doodle I'm doing that I'm never going to show any, it's going to go yeah, on Instagram, yeah. and I want that to look good. Yeah. This is also a project I'm doing for Barney's in Japan, and that level of not just having it look good, but that's the the thought process so you don't you don't make this a bigger deal. Well, I, you know, I, I'm sure that that still floats in my head in the back, but I try not to think about it too much because I think that does put, give me some sort of like pressure and make, you know, probably more anxiety. But right. I, I definitely, I, I just, I think once I 
crack through like, okay, this is what it is. Then luckily things in my past experience have just kind of snowballed from there. I think it is just kind of, you know, once you give the first concept and once they like the client likes it, then I have more confidence. To, okay. I can like just go for it. Right. Once you put, once you get the buy-in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah Then yeah. everything is kind of a little yeah. easier because they're, yeah. like, they're like, Oh, we like it. Yeah. Cause I think that for me, that's always been my experience. It's always like the bookends of the project, like the beginning parts where you just had, you know, just making sure what, what is it they want and if they like it, the actual work, it might take a long time, but that's kind of, you know, you just, kind of get in your own zone and just do it. And then, you know, there's, and there's always bookend at the end, like think last minute things, but that right. comes I, think, I think the concept of bookends is, is really interesting because do you feel the bookend parts are the most important parts of this? I think so. I would think so. Especially the beginning part, just for me to kind of, um, yeah, like when I do any project, it's just like getting the rhythm. Like even if it's just like my, literally the rhythm of my hand doing the drawing or just the rhythm of like what it is I'm going to execute. So once I kind of get into that headspace, then it kind of luckily will just work its way out easily. But it is that um, cracking that. Right. And then the end part. There's always like things I've, I've learned just last minute additions or revisions or, you know, like once you send off all the artwork, you just hope everything's fine and like you know, if there's one or two things, that's doable. But final, 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 final. final. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I always, I actually, actually, I always do look at it as like the bookends. So those are, you know, kind of the more um, challenging in a sense. Like if I can get once I get through that, then it's the work itself will kind of right. Take so a shape. Um, you were you were swirling your hand when we we're talking about flow. Yeah, talking about getting you know into that how do you get into that moment, right? So you, you, that first bookend, and you get to that, we, we then get approved by a client, yeah. right? And now you've figured out your hand, you're, you're, you're actually, um, you've actually figured out what's gonna happen, they're approved, and now you're just, like you said, in kind of go mode. Yeah. Is so, there, is there a, a, a way you get yourself into that mode where? Uh, it, um, it varies. I mean, s- sometimes I'll just draw and draw until I get that right drawing that I think is the right first drawing and then keep it going. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll just kind of sit and stare at the paper and just kind of figure it out in my head. Um, like, you know, my first project with Kevin O'Quan, when um, I remember I just listened to all these old YouTube interviews with him, like in the 90s, and just kind of absorbed who I thought was the essence of this person who right. I admired and try to capture that into the art. So it, you know, it varies. I mean, it, it, a lot of it is just me kind of just going through those motions, whether it be the actual like drawing motions or just like in my head trying to flesh it all out. Right. I mean, now, you know, like you said, going to YouTube and maybe in zoning out yeah. and kind of being immersed in this person because you're, especially with, with that project, doing it on a person yeah. or with a person. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're kind of really wanting to get into that. But yeah, you know, because that's what sometimes trying to figure out, um, there's no, even when we're talking, there is no right way to get into it, but it's kind of, we want to make sure that for certain people they need to do, you know, and I, I even think sometimes like the blank stare on a paper, right? Where it's sometimes that most scary moment because you have not put that line down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the fact that you're like figuring it out in your head is, is almost taking away the the mystique of how beautiful that paper is because mm-hmm. you're you're messing it up in your head and then yeah. when you put that line down yeah, yeah, yeah. it'll be what you've been thinking about the whole time yes, hopefully yeah, yeah. right and but you've been doing it for a while so you can get to that point mm-hmm. right you're not you know this is not your first rodeo where like <laughs> you know you probably didn't do that on your first project you you know you probably went and you just sketched and yeah. sketched and sketched yeah but you've only been so how long you've been really doing this you know creative art biz after leaving your that fashion design job um i left so february of 2014 so that's what three three and a half years, years yeah so yeah. for three and a half years this is this is what kind of your life has been yeah right yeah. Were you, and you were doing a li- only like a little bit of projects beforehand really less than a handful of projects yeah you know just the things to keep it going and then yeah i mean to be honest once i made that decision i really i had those 
few little projects to, you know, do have something to work with. But, um, you know, a lot of it was just, I had to kind of go for it. And yeah. it's scary. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's scary and it's kind of, um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it is scary, but it, it is what it is. Like if you, if, to do this, you'd have to go, we all have to go through that, you know, no, agreed. Agreed. So it, but I mean, sometimes, you know, people don't like having that risk in their lives yeah, it, or, you know, jumping off of, you know, like it's just that thing that some people will always are going to be held back by that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like I, I, I never really thought of myself as that type of risk taker person, but you know, I have people tell me like, wow, you, you, that's a huge risk you took. And then even people who are skeptical, like, oh, what are your plans when you are leaving, like, what do you want to do? What are you going to do for like money and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, chalk it up to just being naive and just gung ho. But I just, you know, I kind of just knew this was something I had to try. And, you know, if it didn't work out after a year, let's, you know, figure out the next thing. But, and, you know, things started picking up. And, you know, I think, you know, the stuff that I was doing, even if, even if it wasn't um, a lot of it at first, like paid projects, but, just me drawing more and putting myself out there. I started creating more of my brand identity. So that actually gave me more confidence too, to be like, okay, I can do this. People respond to it. And there's some, there's a reaction that people generally like. And so, you know, my first year was just kind of just, you know, plugging along, doing that and just, you know, keep it, keep it going. And then luckily things snowballed from there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I put the link into the show notes of, of his Instagram and some of his Facebook posts or any videos that I'll, that I'll have, you can kind of just see how, how Justin's hand is and how it's evolved. And you can kind of see the different looks. If you, follow, if you follow him on Instagram, you can start to see that doing certain fashion things or doing certain kind of personal things, you can see where he's getting that fashion illustration. There's a lot of stuff that is very Picasso-esque. Um, so there's definitely going to see that, that difference. And... So you you were talking about it briefly because we were, you know I wanted to keep you on the Barney's thing for a second mm-hmm. because at least the makeup and the Barney's were always yeah. linked. But then you started doing you know we had a new project for Reebok and you were talking about you know graphic doodles right I love that term graphic doodles. How did you think about just explaining yourself that way? I don't know. I mean it's it's the style that I would always draw if I was just doodling in my notebook or whatever. Um, and then I was like, oh, it's a doodle. It's graphic. It's a graphic doodle. Yeah, and then that, that's how that came about. And I started doing murals just for friends, homes, bathrooms, whoever would let me, <laughs> would, would give me the wall space to do it. And then that kind of <laughs> just grew into um, doing more public things. So, I mean, last year I did a mural, which is still there um, at this showroom, Black Body, um, on Green Street. Okay. That was kind of like when my biggest murals like I started doing stuff in my first year like with events so people wanting like um step and repeats Mm -hmm. you know photo ops or something right so I started doing that for I think Lord and Taylor with this friend of mine his company brand assembly um different charity events so just doing like my graphic doodles on step and repeats um and then so let me let me ask you before we get into are you physically doing it on the actual thing or you're just doing a graphic and then they're reproducing it in oh, this? Oh, physically. I'm physically, okay. physically doing it so, myself. So let's just break down, <laughs> right? When, when a, you know, on the red carpet or anything, when you see the brand's logos behind the people being photographed, usually a designer just creates a logo and does a pattern of it and does it multiple times. So depending on where the person yeah. is, you can see it. Yeah. Justin is now instead doing that thing all by hand. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, all by hand. Um, yeah. On the actual, on the actual um, canvas or whatever sheet. sheet. Yeah. So you know, those were smaller. So I would do those like a few projects. I remember um, 2014, 15, I was doing those, and then so last year, which I think um, I did this mural for Black Body. Um, they're like a lighting showroom space in Soho and Green Street. They just reached out to me through social, invited me to paint um, their downstairs room for New York Design Week. So that was huge. That was a, you know, kind of, I've done these like little murals and things like, and step and repeats, but that was actually like an actual, you know, 
full force world, yeah. let's say. Like they actually put in like um, white plexiglass on the floor. So I got to paint the floor to the ceiling to a pillar. They gave me like, oh, if you could just at least illustrate adding like the light fixtures into the artwork. After that, it's whatever you want to do. Just do whatever you want. Yeah. And it, it was a couple weeks off in between projects and I was like cool I can let's do it and it was fun it was cool to be like oh I'm going to go to Soho and Green Street it's like I'm so that was like was that a room what is that a like um it was so there's it's a huge showroom space they have a downstairs floor so they were hosting for New York Design Week I did this huge wall on the bottom floor and New York Design Week is fashion New York Design Week like interior design okay interior design week yeah yeah it was great I mean it was kind of something I haven't done that in a while like a mural like that. So it's kind of liberating. You kind of have to plot things out a bit. There's yeah, I was going to th- ask you, you're, you're doing your graphic doodles, which tend to be probably eight by 10 inches. <laughs> We're not, and then now you're going to go and do a wall, which is probably eight by 10 feet, maybe yeah. even wider, taller. You're, you're- That's when I have to kind of be more um, strategic. Like, you know, obviously start from the top down, do, do the floor last. It was... Oddly, nicely, like liberating, therapeutic, just to kind of, I think I did over like three or four days, just painting and just just doing something that I haven't done in a while. And then also like on a bigger scale. And then that kind of led to the Reebok. Right. So then, you know, you also sent me a link to this Reebok project. Was it in Santa Monica? Santa Monica. Yeah. So they were, they were opening um, a new concept space. So I think this was their third store they have they had one in um west hollywood another one in la so the opening one in santa monica a good friend of mine she was in charge of opening the store so she knew i did murals so she invited me to that to do this mural with reebok for their store open for their Mm -hmm. their store so it was cool i mean it's a diff another a different brand that never worked with before it's you know i like the idea of working with different brands to kind of just you know create more dimension to your portfolio and um so for, so for something like that you know I, it was cool i got this um skype meeting history brief on reebok and you know their culture and it really you know it, it ended up like they wanted specific words mixed in um and the and the logo mixed in with my motifs and then um and then yeah just for me being in santa monica staying by venice beach i added this beach motif at the bottom just to kind of make it more um local to the spirit so yeah i mean definitely you're seeing how this doodle starts to work with different brands you know you're talking about collaborating with different Mm -hmm. brands but also so that you can do more things but also you can get your your style out to possibly you know so reebok not necessarily thought of as a regular fashion brand it is a fashion brand but on a more obviously like athletic nature sport nature versus kind of let's say high fashion yeah. sometimes and even an interior design yeah. you know place so branching out a little bit of what you were kind of first locked into a little bit more yeah. fashion 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 and now it's that's what interests me a lot with I have a variety of styles and hope, getting also to work with a variety of different clients and in different contexts I'm, I'm always interested in how the work can be different in a different medium or different format so if it's a mural to a packaging to a live events like that's what kind of that's what keeps it interesting for me kind of mix it up a bit more yeah because that's going to show just kind of the breadth of what you can do and like you said increasing your portfolio yeah definitely it's um it keeps it exciting keeps it interesting keeps it um kind of fresh so if you were to boil down the way you approach projects and work mm-hmm as far as getting yourself psyched, getting yourself, you know, into these um, things. We talked about obviously working with the makeup company, you know, you're, you're, you're watching YouTube videos about this, yeah. you know, makeup artist, so you can kind of get into that world. Yeah. What is your normal, you know, if there is a normal of how do you kind of get into this realm? You mm-hmm. know, some people, you know, like when I'm designing, sometimes I'll just blast music, right? So I can kind of get into my own zone. Yeah. It's not for the client. It's just my own moment of like Zen. What would that be for you? Um, music helps. I, I need to have music or something on. Um, I mean, I try to, if I get stumped, just try to go someplace else to sit and draw. If I go to a coffee shop, just to kind of 
mix it up. Um, cause I, your main, your main location yeah, is here, yeah, right? Yeah. You're, you're doing everything usually doing in your everything house. here. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you know, I think I've also learned too, that if I hit a block in it, it's okay. It's fine. Walk away, step away. Don't keep beating at it to force it to happen. Like maybe I need, maybe that's a sign I need to kind of take a breather. Um, because before, I think I would kind of push myself and push myself and push myself to get it right. And if it didn't feel right, it just get more frustrating. So I think I've learned to be like, okay, it's fine to kind of put this one on hold, maybe draw something else, maybe go for a walk, go for a drink. Like you just have to kind of take it easier on myself, not put so much pressure to kind of make it happen like that. Right. That's very self-aware. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't think that most people maybe will try to fight through it. And, and I think that knowing that I have other options to do to not stress myself out a, a lot about yeah. it. Like you said, get yourself out of yeah. that I, mode. I, I, I still have to like remind myself that and I still, it didn't, I didn't do it off the bat. Like I, it took me a while to figure it out, but I think that's what I've, I've realized that is essential and that helps. Like you can't just, it doesn't happen just like that. If it does, great. Perfect. Amazing. Right. But sometimes it doesn't, it takes a while and, um, yeah, and I think it's, it's it's also the case when, you know, you're doing this type of work and you're juggling multiple projects at a time, which can be fun, but it can be just, you know, putting on different hats. So sometimes you just have to kind of be patient, a little more thoughtful, like just if this one doesn't work, I can go to this one, focus on that one, just to kind of learn when to kind of, it's fine to step away and just give yourself a breather. Shifting into something very similar, what, is there a routine that you maintain? Is it, is it- is there something that you, you kind of like, oh, this is what I usually do? Um, I mean, I, I mean, I have my general routine, like, you know, coffee, take a yoga class when I can. But, you know, when I do work, I guess I do my routine. But, you know, I just kind of just go sit at my desk and just kind of start and see what can happen. Um, let it just come to you? Yeah, let it come to me. I mean, I think, like I said, when I describe, like, I stare at the paper, I do a lot of... Th- a lot, of, a lot of times I'm just like thinking in my head if I'm on the subway to a yoga class thinking about the project or sometimes if I am working on a project and I have to like go someplace, I take a picture or have a, a picture of the project on my phone just to look at it on the subway mm-hmm. just to kind of, it's most, yeah, because a lot of times you're just always thinking, how can you fix it, edit it? So, but yeah, once I start it, I guess I just go start it and just mm-hmm. kind of see how it happens and flows and just, you know no I have a timeline so I kind of, it's good to have a barometer of like you know you right. can't you can only dick around so much until you got it to really get it going but um no and I and I asked that question because I think sometimes people don't they don't actually think about it ever because they just do so when I'm asking you a question sometimes it's kind of like do I actually yeah, I mean, do I, this group of you know steps or is it just go go to, go to the computer and when I, start, I guess when I start a project I just kind of just sit and start and just, you know, hopefully get in that right frame. And, you know, I think part of my routine is maybe drawing other things to loosen up to get into before I actually do the actual okay. work work. Right. So if it's like doodling or just to kind of loosen up. We've talked about your fashion doodles. We've talked about your, your graphic doodles. Mm-hmm. Um, we look at this room and there's so many just pieces of art from, other people's art and the Keith Haring and what you're inspired by. Big question. When did you think you considered yourself an artist? Um, that's a hard one. That's hard. Um, or, guess, do, or do you? I mean, I guess I always considered myself an artist. I think it's only been honestly in the last year or two that I've been confident to say that out loudly. I was always just self-conscious about just saying an artist because you have to kind of, I imagine, have this like grandiose... Kind of a manifesto or something. Yeah, or... or just, you know, body of work or something. But, you know, I've always been, I've definitely always been a creative. I'm, I've been, there's no other career path I would have taken. Um, but yeah, I think I've started acknowledging calling myself an artist, but only, I think, really in the last year or so. Because that's what I do. I create art. Um, so... Now that within the last year, this is what you're, you're comfortable yeah. calling yourself. Yeah. Like, what's the hardest part about that? About? Just now, you know, being able to claim that you're an artist. Well, I think anyone in creatives, we're always our own worst critic. 
we are always the hardest on ourselves in general age. So I think there's always that, um, I put a lot of pressure on myself just with the work I do, with work I want to do and how's the work coming. And you always think like, oh, you know, how do you justify the label artists and continue that? Mm -hmm. So there's always that pressure. So I think that's a hard part that, um, I think we're always hardest on ourselves and a lot of it, like whatever I do, I think if it's from a social post to a project to something I do for a friend, like it's, I always feel like it's something of me I put out there. So there's always like, just you're out there. Right. You're, you're just laid bare in a way. You're do you scrutinize everything? Yeah. Right. I, lo- I mean, I, I've gotten for better. You, I mean, not for other people, but I mean like your own. Yeah. I always look at, I'm, you know, I think I've, I've had to get more confident. Like that's when I say I bet better call con- saying I'm an artist and putting my work out there because I just have to get over that fact that I want to keep doing this. I have to kind of share my work, but there's, there's always that insecurity of like, you know, just will people like it and what would the action be? And, you know, there's always, I'm sure naysayers or critics, but that comes with any territory. But I think in general, creatives are always, we're hard on ourselves. Yeah. So I think that's always, you know, that will always kind of like, at least for me, I know carry through and just, you know, the woulda, coulda, shoulda is. Right. And I think I, th- I think it's good that we're hard on ourselves because I think that means we care. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Right? You wouldn't, you if, you if you didn't care about what that piece of you that you're putting out there to share, even if it's in somebody else's project. Yeah, you know, definitely. I mean, you that, know, I, then what's the, then it's almost like it's not really Justin's work or my work. It's. I, yeah, I think, I think that's also like going back. That's why I made, that was why I switched from being designed to what I do now. I just, I, there was a part of me that just didn't care. And I think that's the part where I didn't want to keep falling down that hole in this type of work because, you know, I have to care about this work to enjoy it. Right. And, you know, I might as well just, you know, be working at a bank or something. Not that I could or would. I, I usually ask this question, like, are you analog or digital? But you're analog. I'm definitely old school. I mean, I, I draw everything by hand. I just like that touch, that feel. I just, I need to feel like, the pressure of the pen on paper and just seeing the ink come out, like it just feels more authentic to me. I mean, obviously we're talking about pen and paper or what are your, what are your normal tools? Um, what do you, what do you gravitate, gravitate towards, towards most when you're creating? Markers. So um, I use a lot of Tombow, Faber-Castle, Sharpies, um, like China markers for like texture um yeah but marker is mostly you know um because it's marker do you do a quick pencil line before or do you go straight depends sometimes i do a pencil sometimes i can go straight into it um depend it you know it varies no um, just because obviously most of the stuff we're seeing is is marker rendered yeah but i mean if i do a pencil outline it's very Sometimes I do, it, it doesn't even make sense to follow what I do in pencil, just to kind of plot out, or just be like, okay, like marking right. my territory, basically. Right. Like I'm peeing on the paper, marking my territory, and then I kind of draw, and the chain takes a life of its own, but... Um, that's the name of this podcast. Yeah, yeah, no. marking your territory. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually, that's probably why, how, I'm marking, why I do that. Marking the territory is actually really good. Yeah. So, seeing that you're... you're your body of work and what you've been going through and the connections that you've had, um, lucky enough to, to reach out and, and be connected with these people. And then, like you said, you're actually building relationships. You're not, it's not just business relationships. Yeah. It's, it's probably a little bit, um, more extensive than that, yeah. which is great. Right. And you, you, you have this thing about you now, let's say now if we, if, if we give advice to a younger Justin, who's coming up, okay. You know, in, into this fashion world, Gotcha. Right. Fashion world, illustration world, yeah. whatever it happens to be. Right. What kind of advice would you give that younger Justin? Just, I guess just make sure you enjoy it. Cause that's kind of the advice that I kept in my head. As long as I enjoy it and as long as I am happy doing it, then I think everything else will kind of fall into place. I mean, it's very um, idealistic, but I think it's good to have that as for me as like a foundation. Cause I think, you know, if it, if that changes, then you got to kind of re calculate everything else but I think it's I think it's important to have just have fun with it and make sure you're having fun with what you're doing that makes a lot of sense I mean you know you don't want to be at a job you hate you don't want to be at something you don't enjoy doing because I think this Um, type of stuff you can tell if it's done without any enjoyment 
like this type of right so i think yeah if, you definitely can see where somebody's passion or heart really is not yeah it. and so i think you have to i always i would tell myself to make sure to, to have that and i think that's something i i think i was i learned that and i always try to remember that cool so just a stupid question but what would you be doing if you weren't actually doing art? this i mean i don't think i could do anything else to be honest aside from this um I would like to travel more. Maybe that, I think I'd like to make that into like a extension of like just my work experience. The brand, you want to travel more, maybe do collabos with that to get you to other places? Yeah, I don't know. Like even if it's, you know, I always look at um, like travel illustrations by like Cecil Beaton diaries of like more just for me to kind of do it for myself and if something else happens. But that, I think that would be something I would like to extend to as a another hobby of mine but i just don't i really don't think there's anything else i could do to be honest really <laughs> i don't think so i mean honestly before any of the my only career before this was i was a barista at starbucks i could go back to that but um no no we don't want to lose you to that yeah, yeah. I mean, but no i no i think i think i definitely it's it's very um satisfying to know that you've found your thing and a lot of people are still looking for that. And so I think the fact that I can say that, I think I should, you know, be proud of that and just own that. Cause I think, yeah, I don't think I could do anything else. I'm trying to, my goal is just to make this work. So yeah, I, I don't wish that on anybody. I yeah. think, I think as creatives, right. You try to yeah. push yourself as far as you can. And when you don't love it or enjoy it, you shift it to something. Yes. You know, yeah. because even when you, you mentioned in the beginning of the interview, you still love fashion, but you realize that you need to shift into something yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't a total, like, I am abandoning fashion yes, forever. Yeah. It's part of you. Yeah. But it's not like, I just can't do this. Yeah. Part. I think that's, I think that's a, maybe going back to your question about um, advice I would give myself. I think uh, be more open to opportunities and changes. You know, I think that's also just helps you grow and just helps you, you can change your work, maybe something for the better. So. You know, I think, like like you said, like I was in fashion, didn't abandon fashion, but was more open to other things that could work with my fashion style. So mm -hmm. I think having that flexibility just to be open to different things is, I think, I think is, is important, especially nowadays, because there's so much out there. There's other illustrators, other visual stuff that, you know, you have to be kind of, I think, flexible just to kind of go with the flow and adapt. Right, right. So what does the future hold? <laughs> for the Justin brand? Um, keep it going. Uh, a few more projects I'm working on. Hopefully getting a few more things that are maybe more personal to me out there more. Okay. So. Um, Less client driven? Yeah. I mean, if there's stories I want to tell and, you know, if it's, I, I paint. So I like, always like to go back to do more painting. Because I think just, um. I, I already get that question. I never really know what to ask to be answer, to be honest, like what's in store. Cause you know, I think, um, at least my plan is just, you know, keep it going and, you know, hopefully then kind of focus on stuff I want to do for myself. Well, I think that basically continuing to tell your story, continuing to, to be the creative that you're, you're, you are and who people are actually looking towards. I mean, mm -hmm. I, um, I think that's something that you're gonna keep on doing. I can see, I mean, there's there's no way you're gonna stop what you're doing considering <laughs> how with it, this this beautifully artistic room looks like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it, this is not just some kind of, you know, overnight thing that you just thought of. This is this is something that's in you. Yeah. And it's it's, you know, you're just you're just getting your express yourself. And yeah. you know, it's it's great that you're working with these brands that are continuing to allow you to be you. Yeah. So I think we're done. Yeah. This has been an amazing interview. Oh, thank you. I always end it when I'm learning so much more from the creative people that I know. And I think it's really nice to start to figure out that there's so many similar struggles that we all go through or just how we actually start to arrive at that place where we feel most comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I'm meeting a lot of people that they're still at that comfortable place. And yeah. I think it's really good that, you know, you don't want to be anything else but this. 
right? Yeah. You, you, you can't even fathom the idea of not being this. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, and honestly, neither could I. Yeah. Probably my, my wife couldn't, right? Yeah. But it's, I, I think that's great. And I can't wait to put everything in the show notes so that people can look at all the work that you've done and have links and follow you and see all your different styles. Oh, because you. I think that's one of the things that is very impressive that I'm not looking at one style so we can say that there is a little bit of Justin in all of them. And even though if I looked at four different things and there are four different types of styles, I can all say that's oh. Justin's hand, right? And I think that's really important. Thank so, you. Thank you for being on the podcast, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This Thanks. was a fun conversation. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. This has been Works in Process. Thanks for listening. Go to the podcast website, wip.show, where you can find the show notes from this episode and find links to any artists, resources, and work that's mentioned in the interview. Also, if you haven't done so, please subscribe to my Works in Process podcast on Apple Podcasts or any other place you get your podcasts. You also can connect with me on Twitter or Facebook via works underscore in process. That's works with an S underscore in process one word. And you can find behind the scene pics on Instagram by searching the hashtag works underscore in process. Thanks again. And until next time, follow your gut and trust in the process.